It's time for a little fun for both of my watchers and subscribers. Thank you very much. Uh, it's time for some fun. Let's look at another one of these uh, perfect examples of Chinese luck technology. This is an Egret brand by JD Unico. You can see it's about a 50 millimeter lock. Uh, has a five pin core as you can see. Here's the key. It does work intermittently. There we go. Um, nothing special about it. It is not hardened despite what it says here and kind of unusual. You don't often see these rubber gaskets along the top to keep the weather out. You usually finally find these on older Yales and it, it's a good idea to put a seal around the top so water doesn't drain down the hasp into the locking mechanism but in this case I don't think it really matters. This one's not going to last very long based on what I'm seeing so far. Okay, I would like to uh, first, let's go ahead and try to pick it. And just nice wide keyway, take any tension wrench you like. I'm just going to take this nice fat one because there's plenty of room to work. And again, in a locks that don't have a lot of tolerance, not a lot of quality in, in uh, engineering, we're just going to take our pick and what we call in a previous video called bitch pick it. Moderate tension on the tension wrench. I'll hold this down so you can see. And then just kind of rig it up and down. And now we're getting a little... The, it looks like the core has partially turned in the unlock and I don't know why this is part of that intermittent behavior I was talking about. Okay, continue with the bitch picking and bam, we're in. Okay, now let's lock it back up. It doesn't spring back automatically which kind of makes you worry a little bit about its longevity. Um, if you look down inside of here, you'll notice that there are supposed to be two paws, one here and one here, telling you it locks on both sides. And if you look inside of there, indeed you can see one paw, but this one apparently is not functional. I don't know why that is. Uh, anyway, let's lock it back up. Okay, we've, Let's try one more technique that my two subscribers might recall. Again with the fat tension wrench in there. And we call this the rocking technique. And we're just going to take our pick, we're just going to stick it down inside of there, and we're just going to rock back and forth. The idea being that when we apply moderate tension to the tension wrench, as we rock back and forth on those pins, when they reach the shear line, they're going to stay there. Good locks won't do that, but cheap ones, they absolutely will. I'll even put the pick in backwards, so you know I'm not picking it. All the way to the back, moderate tension, and just rock it. See what happens. Bam, open. That's how fast that is. That technique does work. Well, you know I'm not through with this lock yet. Uh, I'm not even, it is not shielded. I'm not even going to bother to do that. Uh, let me lock it back because it's not spring loaded. I guess they couldn't afford a spring. Six bucks for nothing. Okay, we're going to pull these rubber gaskets out of the way. Try to pull these rubber gaskets out of the way. One. Okay, let's just try to shim it. Take a shim, shove it in there, bam, open. Now you notice it opened on the non-primary side. It, we, sh we should have needed two shims according to the advertising here, but since we knew that the first one for some reason was a fake or it's just not working, one gets it. And it gets it pretty quick. There's plenty of room there to get in. So anyway, for security, this is not the lock. If For training, this is not the lock. For your collection, this is not the lock. Nor, I think, are any of the Chinese locks that sell for you know less than $10. They're simply not worth the money for either training or to provide you with any level of security. Anyway, thanks for your time. Always enjoy talking about Chinese technology. Everybody be safe and uh, stay legal.